If you want to know how to be the it girl, if you want to know some it girl beauty hacks to look good all the time, have a magnetic aura, and not have those days where you see something on someone and then you try to put it on yourself, but it just doesn't look the same, then keep watching this video because in this video, I'm going to be telling you guys all about how to achieve that. <laughs> best friends and welcome back to my sleepover today's video is one of your favorite series on my channel which is how to become an it girl i usually do either it girl hacks or i analyze popular movie and tv show it girls in this series but this video is going to be the it girl beauty secrets to always look good that you probably haven't heard of if you want more like basic one-on-one -on -one, then i recommend checking this video after watching this one but for this video i try to have more advanced unique tips we're going to be talking about how to choose colors for yourself that actually flatter you, how to understand why some colors don't look as good on you as others, how to still have the color that you want to wear but wear it in a way that flatters you, how to understand your body and not have that day where you just see something on a model and you buy the same outfit and it just doesn't look as flattering on you. So number one it girl secret to always look good is kind of a psychology hack because there is psychology behind this. So let me start by saying this. In 2000 2019, Louvre commissioned some of their top perfumers to create fragrances for eight works in their collection. Now, why would Louvre want to try to make perfumes for their paintings? Their paintings, after all, like they don't need to wear perfume. Well, a bunch of studies have shown that smells actually affect how we perceive things as well as how we perceive ourselves. There has been study done on this where scent even affected how people perceived paintings. And I know we're not painting tanks were not works of art but the important part for you and me is that this research gets even better so after that number of studies also proceeded to examine how smells alter the perception of attractiveness of a person and it was shown that smells can even influence the judgments of attractiveness age and even gender furthermore wearing a scent affects the self-image of the individual who wears that scent and can make one feel more confident so what does this mean for you and me to put it more in human words scents can make you perceived by others is more attractive as well as wearing a scent can make you feel more confident so if you want to be perceived as more attractive and feel more confident about yourself then make sure to wear a signature scent and since a lot of perfumes can be pretty expensive especially the good quality designer ones i would personally recommend dossier perfumes because they produce designer inspired scents that have the same quality without having the brand tax on them so you know how mostly when you're buying something that's designer you're also paying for the name that's why something can have the exact same quality but the designer item is going to cost way more than let's say an item with the same ingredients without a brand name so because of that dossier perfumes are actually around 39 dollars while designer perfumes can go from 50 dollars to 280 dollars and also if you order three different bottles then you're going to get free shipping and 25 percent off which i think is amazing deal also dossier offers offers up to 20% welcome offer so you can get up to 20% off on your first purchase. I actually got two perfumes by Dossier sent to me and I'm going to review them for you guys. This has to be an honest review and the two scents that I chose was the first one was Woody Chestnut and one thing that I really really loved about it is that on the website if you don't know what kind of scent you want you can actually take their scent quiz and they're going to recommend scents for you. This one was actually the one that was recommended to me. As you guys can see, it also says the inspiration perfume for this as well as how Dossier works. It has information about their 30-day return policy, so if you don't like something, you can just return it. If you return within the 30 days, then you get your money back, no questions asked. Okay, let's do a smell test. I actually really love this one. It's a little spicy because it has pepper, but that was something that I was going for because I wanted to try something new with my perfumes. It smells like spice, some kind of like orange blossom, which yeah, there's orange blossom in here. And it also smells like vanilla. Vanilla is actually really strong in both of the ones that I chose. And this is the second perfume, Floral Marshmallow. 
It smells a little more like flowers, but it still has that vanilla sweetness to it. If you're into some floral, but at the same time sweet scents, I would definitely get this one. But honestly, between these two, I really cannot decide which one is my favorite. And if you guys want to get some affordable, beautiful luxury perfumes without the tax markup for yourself, you can take advantage of the 20% welcome offer. As well as since this is a collab with Dosia, you can use this code in order to get additional 5% off. And I'm really hoping that you guys are gonna love these perfumes just as much as I do because this one, the one that the quiz recommended for me is definitely going to be my summer smell. Tip number two is something that probably most of us do and it's that you either go on Pinterest or you go on your favorite celebrities Instagram, you see them wearing certain colors, you see them wearing a certain type of outfit and then you go ahead and get the outfit in that color but when you get it, it doesn't look the same on you. Now I know the whole internet is like, oh, is it a good outfit? Or is she just skinny? But that's not really the complete truth here. What I'm about to say is probably going to blow your mind just like it did mine. And an example of this is something that someone actually commented on one of my videos where I was wearing this black, orange, white kind of ombre shirt with a little bit of darker colors in my makeup. Someone under the video commented that I'm definitely an autumn, which to some people it might be like, what are you talking about? But let me explain. When it comes to color theory, stylists usually use different color seasons. The original color season theory just included four color seasons, I think, or something like that. But the modern one includes 12 in order to be more inclusive and cover more possibilities. But the theory is that just like in seasons in nature, there are different color variations that come out during each season. And there are also different color variations that are dominant in each person. And mimicking those colors will be the most flattering for you. That doesn't mean that you can't wear certain colors. This is more of a tool that by being aware of which, you will be able to see that color that you like. Maybe it's not in the shade or the hue that will be flattering on you. So by having this knowledge, you can actually find that color and the shade and the hue that is going to look amazing on you. But basically when it comes to color seasons, these are the 12 seasons that we have. I'm gonna introduce you to the seasons first and then I'm going to explain how to find your color season. So the 12 color seasons are dark winter, winter, true winter, bright winter, bright spring, true spring, and light spring, soft summer, true summer, and light summer, and finally for autumn, it is dark autumn, true autumn, or soft autumn. Your color season is determined by three different aspects in your appearance. The first one is whether you're warm or cool, the second one is whether you're light or dark, and the third one is whether you're muted or bright. So now I'm going to explain these three different dimensions and help you find out which one you are out of those. To know if you're warm or cool, think about do you look better in silver or do you look better in gold? If you wear gold, does it bring out your skin? And if you wear silver, does it kind of like dull your skin down? If that's the key, you're probably warm. If it's the opposite, when you wear silver, your skin shines. And if you wear gold, it kind of like, it makes you look really bronzy and sickly. You're probably cool. At the same time, there's the vein test, which some of you guys in the comments of my how to look good with no makeup videos said that it was debunked, but I know that some stylists still use it. So you can try that one too. You can look at your veins and see whether they're mostly green undertone or whether they're mostly leaning towards blue. At the same time, this might even be obvious to you by looking at yourself. Do you look more cool toned or do you look more warm toned? Here are examples of warm toned celebrities and here are examples of cool toned celebrities. And one more thing that you can use to figure it out is do your lips tint more purple, like your natural lip color without any lipstick? Are they more purple or are they more peachy. I know no one's lips are going to be completely purple, but do they lean more towards purple or do they lean more towards being peachy? If we talk about the second dimension, light versus dark, the first thing that you should ask yourself in order to find out is, are your features lighter for your ethnicity or are they darker for your ethnicity? It's not about being a blonde or a brunette. It's about for your specific 
specific ethnicity. Are you darker or are you lighter? For me personally, I am dark. And that's also something that you probably see the most when you see me because for my ethnicity, I have very dark eyebrows. My natural hair is very dark and I have like darker features. And one more test to know if you're dark or light is when you wear black, does it make you look a little strange or does it really draw attention to your hair and your eyebrows and your eyes like does it make it pop and the third dimension muted versus bright here's how you figure this out honestly i have the biggest problem with this one because i watch a lot of videos about it but i still don't know if i'm actually understanding it correctly so what i say maybe take it a little bit with a grain of salt but here's example of muted versus bright so muted you're going to have more gray undertones to you you're going to have less contrast between your features and you won't be too light or too dark. For bright, there's kind of a hack. If your eyes stand out against your hair, you're most likely bright. Like if you have really dark black hair and popping blue eyes, brights also don't have grayness in their features and their features usually contrast. Okay, now that we have all of these three different characteristics, I want you to think when you look at yourself in the mirror, which one of those jumps out at you the most? For me, for example, when I look at myself, I can definitely see that I'm dark. I can see how prominent my eyebrows are. I can see how much contrast there is and how much kind of like darker I am for my specific ethnicity. The second one that I notice is usually that I'm very warm toned. It's not the first one because I can wear some cool things and get away with it. So I can say that my primary characteristic is dark and my secondary characteristic is warm. For you, it might be different. For you, it might be when you look in the mirror, the first thing that you see is that you're really cool toned or the first thing that's most prominent about you is that you're very warm toned or maybe you see the whole like muted versus bright thing maybe you're very muted and you notice that or maybe you're like me but the opposite and you notice that you're very light for your specific ethnicity and the hack about what to look at for your second characteristic is that if your dominant characteristic is value or chroma like light and dark muted and bright then the second characteristic will most likely be whether you're warm or cool and if it's the opposite if your first characteristic is whether you're warm or cool. The second characteristic, you should probably look at chroma. And now if you've been following along, if you have your first characteristic and second characteristic down, you can figure out your color season. So starting off with your first characteristic, look for it on this side of the charts. And your second characteristic, look at that and then go to whatever it equals to. And this is your results. After that, you can look up your color palettes, but even better cheat code to this is that if you understand your or light versus dark, bright versus muted, and warm versus cool. You can really already not necessarily look up a color palette, but already know what kind of clothing color choices to make yourself. So first of all, warm versus cool. If you're leaning more warm, try to wear warm shades. That doesn't mean you can't wear blue. You can wear warm blue as opposed to cool blue. If you are cool, that doesn't mean you can't wear red. You can wear a cooler red as opposed to warm red. Every single color has a warmer variation and a cooler variation. Dark versus light. Darks usually look pretty nice in black. It brings out your features. While lights, it might wash you out. But if you do excuse me looking like a total mess, here's a little bit of an editing intervention. So basically, this is not a rule. This is more understanding the effects that the colors that you wear have on your appearance and then using that to create exactly the effect that you want to create. For example, being muted doesn't mean that you cannot wear black. For Taylor Swift, it worked really well in her Look What You Made Me Do music video because because it made her look more striking and kind of like something is a little off. The same exact thing can be said about Taylor Momsen and her rock career. She is very light and her wearing those dark colors, it looks very striking on her. But anyway, same goes for being muted, for example. If you're muted, then bright colors will draw more attention to them when they're on you and it will look more like a statement. Like you see with Gigi Hadid, for example, here. Here she looks a little more sophisticated. Everything just kind of goes with her nature 
while here it looks like she's really making a statement, that's because she's muted and when she wears bright colors, they draw attention to them. While the same wouldn't be true of someone who has a bright aspect to them. So even though the color theory device is to go with your natural features to create a more harmonious look, it's more understanding what effect it has to create the effect that you want. Chroma is a really good one to use, so the muted versus bright. Brights will usually look better in saturated and kind of like neon colors, while if you put that kind of really bright color on a person who has a muted characteristic in their appearance, it's going to draw more attention to themselves rather than that person, and if they were to wear something more muted tone itself, it would make them look more sophisticated. What you can do if you can't really figure out the colors that look good on you or what your color palette is, take the color palette that you're thinking about, take a photo of yourself, put it in PixArt, and then match the colors in color like near your face and see how you feel about it. That's pretty much kind of like the easy cheat way to find out your color season or to find your color palette. Number four, also using the PixArt, I'm going to tell you guys how to not really make that mistake of going to the hairstylist thinking that certain color will look amazing on your hair because you saw it on someone else and it looked great and then coming out and being like, it doesn't have the same effect. That was kind of what happens to me with this color. It's not completely bad, but I went in unprepared. I just saw a bunch of pictures of this hair color and I was like, I really want that color without really thinking how much it would flatter my skin tone. So what you can do if you're thinking about dyeing your hair is get PixArt and go to the hair changing option. Then try whatever color you're thinking about trying on yourself and see how it looks. It's better to take this picture in natural neutral lighting so the lighting won't really skew your perception or anything. And I just wanted to say that with all of these recommendations and with all of these like color clothing tips, it doesn't mean that you can't wear what you want to wear. If wearing something makes you happy, then go ahead and do it. If you want a more basic, applicable to everyone, not really like color or style theory version of this video, where I talk about so many life-saving tips to look good, then check out this video right here because that video is also going to tell you how to find your personal style if that's something you're interested in and i'll see you guys in the next one bye